Hi, I'm Dr. Dave Clayton, and this is Cholesterol Mastery. Today, we're gonna to be talking about the keto diet and how it's gonna impact your cholesterol levels. If you're watching this video, you may be on the keto diet or thinking about the keto diet, but you're concerned about the impact that it's gonna have on your cholesterol. I'm gonna cover some of the common health benefits of the keto diet, give you a little bit of an overview, and then we're gonna dig into the impact on the cholesterol panels, and I'm gonna give you some tips on how you can maximize the health benefits of the keto diet when it comes to improving your cholesterol levels. If you're new to this channel, I'm Dr. Dave Clayton, and this is Cholesterol Mastery, where I help you improve your cholesterol without taking medications. So let's start with a brief overview of what is the keto diet. The keto diet simply is a super low carbohydrate diet where we get most of our calories from protein and fats. Now, how much carbohydrate you get depends on the program that you're on, but most diets recommend less than 50 grams of carbohydrates daily with some of the more aggressive protocols going for less than 20 grams of carbohydrates daily. Now, to put this in perspective, this is not a lot of carbohydrates. A typical Oreo cookie might have about 12 grams of carbohydrates, meaning that on a less than 20 gram carbohydrate daily diet, you're getting less than two Oreo cookies a day. If we think about the 50 gram carbohydrate limit, that's still not that much. Your average plate of spaghetti might have as much as 75 to 100 grams of carbohydrate. So still, we're talking about a super low carbohydrate diet, no matter how low we decide to go. So that's carbohydrates. When we look at how much protein we need in the diet, general recommendations are for about one gram per kilogram of body weight daily. So your average person might need about 50 to 70 grams of protein a day to sustain lean muscle mass. Uh, you might wanna get more if you're looking at building muscle, uh, but a gram per kilogram is a good starting place. And then we're gonna get the rest of our calories from fat. So we're talking about a super low carbohydrate, adequate protein, and high fat diet. So let's look at some of the health benefits of the keto diet. I'm a big fan of the keto diet and I've been following a modified version of keto for several years. The two biggest benefits of keto are weight loss and prevention or treatment of diabetes. When we look at weight loss, I have seen dozens of studies and I have yet to see one study where another diet beats keto in a head-to-head -head comparison of weight loss. So if you're looking to lose weight or maintain your lean body weight, keto is a great place to start. Also with prevention of diabetes or treatment of diabetes. Diabetes is essentially a dysregulation of carbohydrate metabolism. And when we get rid of the carbohydrates, we get rid of the diabetes. Uh, some studies show that greater than 90% of people who shift over to a keto diet either reduce or eliminate their medications for diabetes. But let's look at the impact of the keto diet on cholesterol levels. So at any age, if we're looking at a diet for its health benefits, we wanna look at the impact on our cardiovascular health and our eventual risk of a heart attack or a stroke. And the cholesterol panel is a good way to measure that risk. Now there's three main components to a cholesterol panel, the triglycerides, the HDL, and the LDL. So let's look at each of those in turn and let's see how the studies show keto impacting each of those. So let's start with a look at triglycerides. Triglycerides are essentially the way that the body repackages excess carbohydrate in the diet and stores it as fat. When we have too many carbohydrates in the diet, the liver breaks those down, repackages them into fats, and then stores them for future use. When we have a high carbohydrate diet, triglycerides tend to go up as this system gets backlogged. And in fact, what we see is that high triglycerides and diabetes go hand in hand in most people, that the elevated triglycerides is an early warning sign that diabetes may be looming in the future. So with that in mind, what we see is that when we go on a keto diet and we get rid of those carbohydrates or drastically reduce them, the triglycerides go down. And most studies are consistent in showing a pretty significant drop in triglycerides, usually around 30% or more. So going on a keto diet, if we have high triglycerides, this is gonna really drop the triglycerides to new lows. And I've seen this in my own practice where putting patients on a low carbohydrate diet has an immediate and positive impact on those triglycerides, pushing them down from an elevated range into the normal range. So now let's turn our attention to HDL, which is the good cholesterol. 
we want that good cholesterol to be as high as possible. Higher is better. And when we think about the factors that drive HDL down into the ranges that put us at risk of a heart attack or stroke, we see two that are directly related to the keto diet. So a high carbohydrate diet and being overweight are both risk factors for low HDL levels. So it's no surprise that when we look at the research, what we find is that going on a keto diet is a great way to improve HDL. Studies show that a 10% or more increase in HDL is pretty typical with a shift to a low carbohydrate ketogenic diet. So we've got great news when it comes to keto and HDL and great news when it comes to keto and triglycerides. So let's look at LDL, which is our bad cholesterol. Well, here the data isn't quite as positive as it is for weight loss and diabetes and HDL and triglycerides. What we see is that across studies, LDL can really do anything on the keto diet. It could go up pretty substantially, it could stay the same, or in some cases it can go down. So the question is, why does the keto impact have such a variable impact on LDL levels? And I can tell you in my own practice, I've seen that some people who go on the keto diet, that LDL or bad cholesterol goes through the roof. I've seen numbers well north of 200 when it comes to LDL, keeping in mind that the LDL should be ideally below 100 or even below 70. Now, when that LDL goes up, what we see is that cholesterol tends to accumulate in the arteries and over time, this can run the risk of a heart attack or a stroke. So we don't want this to happen. We wanna go on the keto diet, but make sure that the LDL stays in the normal or optimal range. Okay, to understand this, let's look at what drives LDL specifically with respect to the changes we're making on the keto diet. Well, we're getting rid of the carbohydrates, but carbohydrates don't really have an impact on LDL levels. So that's not gonna be much of an issue. We're gonna lose some weight, which is great, but that also doesn't have an impact on LDL levels. Uh, we're gonna have enough protein on our diet, about a gram per kilogram per day, and again, that's not gonna have a major impact on LDL levels. And then we're gonna have a lot of fat in the diet. And as you might guess, the amount of fat in the diet does have a pretty substantial impact on LDL. And we're gonna dig into that over the next couple of slides and show you why. But before we get into the fats, I wanna talk about one other aspect of keto that gets overlooked. Now, keto, if you think about it in terms of fats and proteins, can be a pretty fun diet. So you get to eat meat and fish and nuts and fats and butter and coconut oil. So there's a lot of really fun stuff that you can have on a keto diet. But one thing that a lot of people forget or don't think about is the vegetables. Now, vegetables and plant matter tend to have a really positive impact on LDL levels. A lot of us don't get enough vegetables, and when we start putting those back in the diet in the context of any diet, but specifically keto, what we see is that it has a mitigating impact on the LDL levels. So plants have two compounds that have a positive impact on LDL. Those are fiber and sterols. Sterols work to block the absorption of dietary cholesterol, and fiber acts like a sponge in the intestinal tract to soak up that cholesterol and fat and slow its absorption. So when we have a lot of vegetables in the diet, what we see is that we add more sterols and fiber to the diet, and we have a pretty significant decrease in our LDL levels. A high sterile, high fiber diet might have as much as a 15 to 20% reduction in LDL. So when you're on the keto diet, it's important to think about how many vegetables you're getting. And again, focusing on the low carbohydrate vegetables where you're gonna get a lot of those fiber and sterols, but not much of the carbohydrate. So that's one way that we can mitigate the impact of keto on our LDL cholesterol. Now, the other way is to look at the actual fat that's constituting our diet. When we look at fat, we can think of it in terms of three broad categories. We've got the saturated fats, and these are the ones that are solid at room temperature, like coconut oil or butter. We've also got the monounsaturated fats, and we find these most commonly in olive oil or avocado oils. And we've also got our polyunsaturated fats that are found in nuts and fish. And when we think about our dietary fats in these categories, what we see is that each of these categories has a different impact on our LDL cholesterol levels. 
saturated fats, like those from animal fats, dairy, or coconut or palm oils, increase LDL often pretty substantially. When we look at monounsaturated fats, they've got a really positive impact on our cholesterol panel by increasing our good cholesterol while decreasing our LDL or our bad cholesterol. And this is why the Mediterranean diet is so popular among cardiologists because what we see is that more avocados, more olives, means more good cholesterol and less bad cholesterol, keeping those arteries nice and clean. And then when we look at the polyunsaturated fats, whether it's from fish or from nuts or other sources, we see a beneficial impact on our LDL cholesterol, pushing it down. So what we can see right away is that our choice of fats is gonna have a pretty significant impact on our LDL levels. If we focus our diet primarily on saturated fats, then LDL is gonna go up pretty substantially. If we focus on monounsaturated fats, kind of like the Mediterranean diet would, what we're gonna see is that we're gonna get the positive impact on our good cholesterol while we see our LDL go down, having a favorable benefit for our cholesterol panel and our cardiovascular disease risk. And the amount of fats that we get from polyunsaturated sources is also gonna have a positive impact on our bad cholesterol. So when we look at all of this in aggregate, what we see is that no matter what version of the keto diet you follow, you should see a nice impact on body weight, a nice impact on your diabetes risk, also a positive impact on triglycerides and HDL. And the impact that you're gonna see on your LDL is gonna be largely determinant on two things. One is how many vegetables you retain in the diet, and the other is your balance of fats, whether you're getting saturated, monounsaturated, or polyunsaturated fats. So my encouragement would be that if you're concerned about your cholesterol levels and you really wanna see not only all of the positive benefits of the keto diet, but you wanna avoid some of the risks of high LDL levels, I would say focus your fat intake on the monounsaturated fats with a moderate intake of saturated fats and a healthy balance of polyunsaturated fats. If you follow this prescription, you'll get all the benefits of the keto diet with none of the cardiovascular risk. So I hope you enjoyed this video, thanks for watching. If you wanna learn more about cholesterol, please like and subscribe to this channel. And if you wanna dig into improving your cholesterol panel, check out rx5.com where we've got our 30-day cholesterol mastery program full of detailed tips and one-on-one -on -one coaching to help you take control of your cholesterol once and for all without taking medications. Again, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.